What's up people, you're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. Don't forget to subscribe. Today we've got the top version of the i30 sedan in the inline trim. The pure end version should be a level up from this one, but we've got quite a bit of experience with the i30 sedan with this engine, and it should be enough power for most people. This sedan in the name means more than you may think. In this generation, it's not only just a body type difference, but much more. You see, when Hyundai dropped the name Elantra and renamed it i30 sedan, the Elantra was due for a whole new model. At the same time, the i30, now called i30 hatch, was due for a facelift. Oh, and for our viewers overseas, you might know this car as the Elantra. Most markets retained the name, but in Australia, it is the i30 sedan now. In Australia, in this generation, the hatch is a facelift and the i30 sedan is a significantly different new model. The most obvious difference lies in the design and the front of the car is just so damn awesome. Now we can see the huge grille is the current direction for a number of Hyundai and Genesis vehicles. This one is actually more befitting than some other solutions. It's large, but so cleverly incorporated into the front that it is the defining feature. It's integrated with the darkened headlights and leaves just enough room at the front to fit similarly aggressive air intakes and slim lip spoiler. Of course, the N-Line gets some special treatment in terms of styling with special 18-inch wheels, darkened details, and the N-Line badge, which is a blunt statement for those less familiar with the model. The car is also lower and wider than before, and that makes a lot of difference for the look of the front. They also made the low spoiler wider at the sides to emphasize this. The side view shows off these aggressive 18-inch wheels, as well as the sloping roof line, which gives a bit of a fast back vibe. Now, this kind of design solution usually inevitably results in a subtle boot spoiler with a bit of elevation. It's the same here. The rear has a lot more on offer than just this boot spoiler. This is one of the best looking rears of any car on the market. The sedan version is also a bit different on the powering options, but not as much as on the styling front. A two litre naturally aspirated multi-point injected engine comes in the active and elite trims. The former offering the option of a manual or automatic, while the Elite gets the six-speed automatic as standard. This engine produces 120 kilowatts and 203 newton meters of torque from 4,500 revs. This isn't bad, it's an okay choice, but probably not ideal. I really would have liked that new two-liter Kona engine combo. That would have been more appealing. It's better if you go higher up the trim ladder to the N-Line and the N-Line Premium. You get a 1.6 litre turbo as standard. It produces 150 kilowatts and 265 newton meters. Sure, the numbers are higher on paper, but that doesn't even begin to express how differently these two engines push the car. Before I tell you about that, you should know that the 1.6 litre can be paired with a manual or a seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox. So aside from the more direct and sporty dual clutch, the N-Line also gets multi-link rear suspension that makes a huge difference in the way the car feels to drive. Similarly, the power delivery is much better, not only because of the higher numbers, but more importantly, because of that forced induction. The turbo enables much lower presence of torque. It starts from around 1500 revs and goes all the way up to 4,500. What this means is it always feels like the engine's ready to pounce. You're always in top torque revs. In case you do need to shift, the dual clutch does it really quickly, just like it should. Another important point here is that sweet spot between power, weight, and safety. The i30 sedan is a compact car with lower weight, so it does not need massive power to get it moving. It has enough to be fun, but not too much that it feels like a raging wildebeest. Add to that the wonderful steering response, great suspension with an Aussie tune, and the reasonably low weight, and the i30 sedan with the 1.6 litre turbo is indeed a fun car to drive, not only for the novice drivers getting into the performance field. Now, if you want more, there's always the pure end in the fastback or the hatch for now. They will be proper sports cars, but there are rumours they will drop the fastback and replace it with a sedan at some point soon. But for most people, this one is more affordable and requires less driving expertise, but is still fun even if you are an experienced driver. In terms of specifically N-Line features, you get these nice seats and more prominent stitching. The N-Line Premium ups the game too with things like both sound system, heated and cooled seats and the sunroof. The 10.25 inch screen for the infotainment comes with a great layout and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you also get wireless charging, but one little criticism I have with this infotainment screen is for right-hand drive models like what we have here. 
the touch controls are on the left of the screen so it's a bit of a reach for you Jenny but you know, easy for me to press. That is true actually, it's quite a stretch from the driver's seat. It's obviously a carryover from other markets, but honestly, how difficult was it to change this? The 10.25 instrument cluster is matched by the same size digital dash. Oh, I love a digital dash. Yeah. And I really love the horizontal lines as well. That kind of adds to that sporty feel. Definitely. I just kind of wish that they had upgraded this hard plastic on the door trims. Even this stuff's a bit nicer. The thin front gives some of the Spartan feel that was present in old Porsches, but without actually being devoid of the most common modern comforts. The steering wheel is, well, look at it. I personally like it. But some comments under our previous videos with the same steering wheel were not so favorable. Use the comment section below to tell us if you think the steering wheel is great, as I do, or if you hate it. The central console has this separating grip bar, which I don't know, what do you think? I think it, I understand its role in the pure end version, but mm. I don't really understand why it had to be, you know, translated across to the end line. That's true. Yeah, I kind of feel a bit compartmentalized in my seat over here, Vinny. Yes, yes, you stay over there in your place. <laughs> the seats are nice and supportive, really comfortable. Yeah, I really like my seat. I think it's very comfortable and I particularly like the red stitching that's sort of throughout the cavern. I think it's really fancy. Yeah, it's sporty without being over the top, which I like. It's yeah. subtle. And what is with that lit up drive mode button over there? Oh, yes. I was actually wondering if it was like a boost mode or, you know, it looks like I might have to call the president to get permission to like launch it. <laughs> <clears throat> Paging Miss President Simone. May I have permission to launch? No, you may not. Oh. While this charging tray is in front of the gear lever, cup holders are rather large and you also get glove box, door pockets and a bin under the armrest. Space in the back is awesome for this segment. Adults in the back will have no problems whatsoever in the i30 sedan. Legroom is great, headroom is sufficient, and knee angle is good. Also, if you're looking into a larger sedan strictly for the sake of driving adults in the back, test the i30 sedan out and maybe you can save a lot of money. Rear amenities include armrests with cup holders, smallish door bins, but you do get rear air vents, which is pretty rare these days. The boot in the sedan version is bigger and it gives 474 litres of space, which is pretty good. But the load lip is prominent. On the good side, the opening is about as wide as it can be. Still, obviously it's a compact car, so it's not gonna accommodate huge objects. Another plus is a full-size spare, a rarity nowadays. Safety is pretty good. Even the entry level trim starts with four collision avoidance assist, driver attention warning, lane keep assist, lane following assist, smart cruise control, auto dusk sensing headlights, LED daytime running lights, rear parking sensors, rear view monitor with parking guide, and electronic parking brake. The Elite adds blind spot collision avoidance, rear cross traffic collision avoidance, rear parking collision avoidance, and rain sensors. This N-Line has all of the above except the rear parking collision avoidance. And the N-Line Premium adds that and front parking sensors. Now with all this being said, I should point out one more thing. You see, this car is a compact sedan with a 1.6 litre engine. Not a larger luxury car, not a hot hatch. It is awesome in this segment with loads of kit, amazing design, and honestly, surprising quality. Now despite all its quality, the price is limited by the segment expectations. So how much is the i30 sedan actually? The most affordable option starts from just under 25,000, while the N-Line Premium goes up a bit to over 37,000. While the drive, futuristic style, and the amount of kit you get for this kind of money is actually really good. The N-Line I have here is actually the sweet spot in bang for buck. You get loads of cool features and this engine for just over 30,000 for the manual or 2,000 more for the dual clutch version. Now, while I really like this N-Line Premium, it has some nice luxury additions. I would say my pick for value for money would be the N-Line. It has that enough of that sporty drive and nice features, but still comfortable for everyday use. So that would be my Goldilocks in the i30 range. Thanks again for watching Car Tower TV. So in the i30 range, what would be your pick? Leave it in the comments below and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Peace.